I knew it would most likely happen. I was hoping it wouldn't. But as you can see, the dogs, as I say, Jurassic Park, right? Life will find a way. And uh, Ghost and Mora just ripping this welded wire everywhere and escaping out of here. So I don't know what I'm gonna have to do. I need to make like a temporary fix right now and patch all this stuff in because we can't have them getting out and running around and stuff. So if you guys have been watching, Ghost has been escaping like three times a day. And, you know, he rips the wire off and says, oh, I'm free. I'm free. So it seems to be only in the corners for right now and right up here in the front. So I'm just going to patch this stuff up. But it's very annoying. It's, uh, it's very frustrating. <laughs> You, you know, you build something and the dog just completely destroy it and ruin it. And so we're trying to figure a way how to do it where it looks okay. Right now it looks like a big junk pile fence, but I don't know what else to do. Got to get it patched so they cannot keep escaping. So what I think we're going to do, I just don't have any. I have to go to town with the trailer and get them. I get a bunch of cattle panels that I think we're going to end up doing. And putting these either on the outside like this, right. all the way around, um, so they can't get out in no way, shape, or form, um, or we'll put them on the inside. I really didn't want them on the outside, I wanted to have the, you could see the wood, but at this point I'd rather them just be in there when we need them to be in here, rather than have it look like wood, so. But I think that's what we're going to do, these things are only 16 feet long though. So we're going to have to cut them to fit. I have to use a grinder to cut them. But I think that's what we're going to end up doing. But like I said, I have to get the trailer because these things are 16 feet long each. And my little tiny truck can't bring them all out or bring them all back. So I got to rub the, the flatbed. So. Well, this spot right here, this was the first start of all of them escaping. Yeah. Um, it started with Jaina. She got crazy, started ripping the wire off, and Ghost figured out that, hey, I kind of like that idea. And he just continued to rip it apart and then squeeze through there. So that's why these boards are here. I mean, the fence is totally ripped off. Yeah, it's getting worse day by day, so yeah. I'm just going to have to cut it out. Yeah, just get rid of it's it. It's horrible that these dogs are, I mean... I get it, they wanna be out. Yeah. They don't wanna be in here, but they're not in here all day. Early morning, we go, you know, take the kids for, um, bus to the bus, you know, yeah. and they don't wanna be in here. So yeah. they're like, you know what, I'm out. Yeah. And this is what happens. Yeah. And I'm like, man, dude. Because it costs a lot of money, yeah. all this stuff, you know? It's not cheap. No. And so it's very frustrating when they do this. No. Well, so Ghost, he figured out he could squeeze out, so we put all these boards in place so he could stop squeezing through there. Well, he just moved over to this spot. Yeah. And he's tore through this already. He's already squeezed through there. He got out this morning. He met us down on the driveway. Yep. And, um, yeah. I, and I'm sure once I patch this up, he'll do it over here. Yeah, he'll find another or spot. Or he'll do it over there. Or... It's like, you know, it's like, what do you do? Yeah. What do you do? You're I mean, we built them a nice dog house. This is plenty enough room for them um, for when they're in here. But it's like, come on, dogs, please. Yeah. Please. I can't have you running around. I can't have you on the deck all day. I can't do that. Yeah. I got things to do, and you guys are right underneath our feet and running off into the woods and going to the neighbor's property. So I just, you know. Yeah. But then what do you do? I know. So for now, we're just going to fix what we can, like Anthony said. Um, and hopefully, maybe once we fix some things, maybe that will deter Ghost and Jaina from trying to escape. It's Jaina's fault. Yeah. It is. She's the one that started it all. And it's because she's so spoiled rotten. Um, 
she can't be away from you for more than five seconds without her thinking the world's ending. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, welded wire isn't the most strong, secure stuff anyway. Like, I know that. Yeah. I knew that putting it in, but I didn't think they would do this because they, I mean, they didn't even go crazy before. I mean, when we put them in the garden, um, they didn't try chewing their way out. That's why I was like, oh, this is fine because yeah. the garden's the same thing. The most they did was they tried to dig a hole right by our, uh, our quote unquote gate. That was yeah. in the garden. They tried to dig out through there. Yeah. But um, they didn't obviously get out that way, but. No, I mean, why do you think there's welded wire right here? No, why? Because they dug their way out. Yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, like we, we were prepared. Trying to be. Yeah, we did all this when we first did the uh, dog run. We put in this so they wouldn't dig out. And then it's just kind and of. And they dig out and it's slowly yeah. getting worse and worse. And it's. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just, eh. yeah. <laughs> what it is. Yeah, we gotta be smarter than the dogs, I guess. It's, you know? Like I said, life will find a way. Yeah. And I feel bad because I wanted to leave these open for the dogs so they can see. I mean, that was the whole purpose of doing it like this for them so they could see us and know that we're here but if they're just destroying everything I mean it's that's no good you know yeah he's like oh I can't get out so he'll probably just jump out I hope not if he does if he does I don't know I don't know what we're gonna do They haven't ripped the staples out on these things. They really just, it was the welded wire they destroyed. So I think we can probably just staple this on the side for now with a bunch of these fence staples. that's about all I can do right now but we will keep you guys updated on the great escape that's happening around here they should make a whole movie about it you know maybe star Clint Eastwood or something the great escape because <laughs> that's what's happening around here right now and I am just hoping like I said I'm like please don't figure out that you guys can get on top of the doghouse and get out yeah or just climb, or climb run like and jump yeah, I'm worried that they'll figure out that they could climb on the boards and then hop yeah, over. Yeah, and if that's the case, and, the, and if that happens, where I'm, and we see them climbing all the way up and getting out, then I'm gonna have to buy some chain link or something and put it over the top. Yeah, or, or um, bird, bird netting. netting. I mentioned that, I was like, maybe we could use some of that bird netting we use for the chicken coop and use it on top of the dog run if I mean, they jump out. Yeah, but that's so, not gonna happen. So. so come on guys. Can you do me a favor? Let's uh, Keep your fingers crossed with me here because I really don't want that to happen. No, like, I really don't. I don't either When we first started building the fence and we decided to put the wire in there from the garden I was thinking in my mind that they wouldn't try to escape because the gaps between the fence uh, the Planks is really not that big of a gap Um and I thought if anybody's gonna really squeeze through there, it would be Jaina. 
Well, after we put, yeah, after we put the fence up, we didn't have the actual wire on there. They squeezed through there really easily. Well, Jana was the first one out, and then all the other dogs. I remember Ghost tilting his head when she's getting out, and he's like, "Oh!" And yeah. then all of a sudden, he went. He's yeah. like, "Oh, okay, you can get out." Yeah, we re I'm out. we recorded them getting out. Yeah. So then we put the wire on there, and I thought, okay, well, between the wire and the wood, and I think it's just going to deter them from even trying to escape. But boy, was I wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I was so wrong. Um, so hopefully this will stop them. It has been about a week since our baby bunnies were born and I will tell you guys they are doing so well. Um, Mama Jessica here is being a very good mama and taking care of all 12 of her babies. Um, they're still all alive, they're all healthy, big, they're starting to get their fur so they're kind of looking, they're at that phase now where they're really really cute and oh. I just love little baby bunnies, but she's doing well, taking care of them. Like I mentioned, they're growing. Uh, she's doing really well. She's lost quite a bit of weight. <laughs> and uh, she's uh, wasting no time and making up for uh, having all those babies. Right, Jessica? They're all cuddled up and inside their little, in their fur. I will say Jessica ripped out so much more fur than Snowball did, but uh, I mean, obviously that's okay. She, she had a lot more babies, so <laughs> she had a lot more to cover. Look at them all on dick. See, they're starting to kind of get their fur a little bit. They're so cute. So we've been out here checking up on them, uh, usually like two or three times a day, just to make sure they're all doing well. And, um, we actually counted them and there are as seven black ones and five white ones. Actually, some of them look like they could be spotted, kind of like how a uh, snowball is, but only time will tell when they get their actual fur. But uh, I think se having seven black bite baby bunnies is crazy, um, considering Tim from Ridge Life, because he originally gave us the rabbits, uh, he said that he's never had a black rabbit before, and we've had like seven black rabbits total between the two. So obviously Roger, somewhere in there, he's got that one gene that's a black one and he's passing it to his babies, that's for sure. <laughs> and these little guys are doing so well. They're getting big. Melanie did come and get her, her the female, the black one, uh, about a week ago or so now. Yeah, Nora. Yeah, Nora. That's her name. Nora. <laughs> it's a good name. It's a good name. <laughs> and uh, we were going to give our other female to Anthony's mom. Um, but she came over yesterday and hung out with us for a little bit. And we're like, hey, that baby bunny is ready for you to take whenever you're ready. And she was like, yeah, <laughs> I don't need that baby bunny right now. She's got so much other things going on right now. So just tackling one more thing like this, I think... My <laughs> yeah. So now we got another female. Yeah. So I, I three males that we need to do something with. Yeah. I'm not sure if we're going to keep this other female. Maybe. Um, I will ask around and see if there's anybody else in the community that may need a female rabbit. I if, asked Jen and Wiley. Oh, Jen and Wiley. They said they they don't need one right now. Yeah, they're not. I don't. Guess what they need? Chickens. Eggs. <gasps> Eggs. Eggs. <laughs> I know all about eggs. I got tons of eggs. Um, yes, Jen, Wiley, if you guys are watching this right now, I will definitely give you guys some eggs. <laughs> yeah, more than you need. Yeah, more than you need. <laughs> Maybe even more than you want. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I uh, got a hold of Wiley yesterday. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. And I asked him, hey, do you need a rabbit? Yeah. Uh, a pair of rabbits, I even said, you know, male, female. He's like, no. We're not ready for that yet. Soon, maybe. Um, but we do need eggs, because they already need eggs. And they're like, oh, we can definitely use eggs. Yeah. Because they just moved out here, guys. Yeah, and they got no chickens. Nope. So. I might jump on that opportunity before anybody else gets word of that. <laughs> yeah. I'll be your egg supplier, please. <laughs> so Anthony went ahead and is getting ready for summer. Because <laughs> they go yeah. through a lot of water. Yeah, well, and they gotta learn how to use these things. Yeah, so he hooked up the watering system for the rabbits. Yeah, um, yeah and if you guys are wondering, 
But if you guys have animals or anything, this is a super cheap um, option to have a lot of water. You just get a five gallon bucket, you see, and you drill a hole, put a nippler on it like that, and then you just hook up tubing. And you buy these little nipplers online, they're cheap. Yeah, I think it was... Cheap, cheap. They were like $19 for like... Well, I was gonna say, I think they were like $10 for like 20 of them or something. So, yeah, something like that. Yeah. I mean, real cheap. Very cheap. Less than a dollar a piece. Yeah. And then this is just regular tubing. Um, it's better to use dark tubing. I couldn't find any. Help, yeah. with, the, help with algae. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but that's it. Yeah. And it's super easy. You got five gallons. I only got to fill this up. During the summer, it's every other day. They drink that much water. Yeah. But like now, this will last a whole week. So it's nice. And then you know they always have water. Uh, one more thing about the water. Um, during the winter time, though, you will have to make sure that it is drained and there is no water. Because when it freezes, um, it happened to us last year. We had a yeah. little bit of water left in the bucket. And it froze. And of course, it made the bucket crack. <laughs> Yeah, but good thing buckets are only like five bucks. Yeah, yeah. So it cracked and it was leaking, um, so we had to replace it. During the winter time, they don't drink as much as they do, obviously, during the summer. So you're not out here all the time changing the waterers around. No. And this little guy, we, we did say we're going to keep. Well, this little guy, we did say we were going to keep um, this male if he calms down for a minute. And his, name's, his name is Blackbeard. 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 Just like the pirate. <laughs> so I thought that was a cool name. Me and Wyatt came up with that name. So yeah. even though he doesn't have a beard, he's gonna be Blackbeard, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, you picked me up. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'd like to talk to you guys about the state of our country and the choices that we make every single day. Every day, guys, when we walk into these big, giant, massive, big box stores, it seems like we have endless options. Like options are everywhere. Freedom of choice. It's an illusion, guys. It's been carefully crafted by these major corporate giants. Believe it or not, it's just around 11 companies that control everything that we buy. I think it's time to wake up and smell the chemicals, like literally. Did you know that most of the products in these big box stores contain very harmful chemicals? I mean, chemicals that get into our bodies, um, our pets, pet food, uh, the environment, and they're just wreaking havoc all along the, the whole step of the way. Did you guys know at any given time, these big companies, they are undergoing hundreds if not thousands of lawsuits? Like, take a look at this. Like I didn't even know any of that stuff was happening. You really have to like dig down deep and research yourself to even find this kind of stuff out because they have so much money. What ends up happening, it gets swept under the rug and they we don't even know about it. We don't even know this stuff's happening. I used to use Old Spice deodorant and it used to burn. I just thought it was, oh, well, I'm not used to it, whatever. No, nuh-uh. Nope, there's reasons why it burned. These big companies, they don't care about the small guy. The only thing they care about is their bottom line. So if it hurts the small guy, me and you, along the way, eh, so be it. A lot of these guys, these companies, their values don't even align with our values. I'm a patriot, I love America. I care about the, the environment. I care about not having toxic, hazardous materials in my house, around my dogs, around uh, my son. I don't want any of that. So I urge you guys, Click the link down below in this video. Get some more information. Switch away. The only thing we can do is stick together and a whole bunch of small people, we can make this movement happen. There have been thousands and thousands of people that have been doing the switch, making the switch, sending our money to American-made, family-owned, local businesses. You can do it too. Instead of spending this much money at the big box store, you're now spending over here same amount of money on everyday items guys we're talking like toothpaste soap cleaning supplies detergents um, health and beauty stuff vitamins all, so much stuff that's all american made and really 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 good for you they spend millions of dollars doing research to get the best most eco-friendly 
ingredients and extraction methods and different things is the best thing I've come across and I really want to share it with you guys. You need to be invited to be a part of this. So guys, let's stop feeding this corporate machine. You know they don't care about us anyway. Let's start focusing on more of America. America, America first. Let's start focusing on that. Let's have a more healthier, happy, better future for our kids, for ourselves, for our grandkids, for everything. Can't do it alone, guys. Click that link down below. You will not be disappointed, I promise you. Now that we got the dogs taken care of and the rabbits taken care of, I need to take care of my garden today. As it is supposed to rain um, later on today and pretty much all day tomorrow, um, and I've been miracle growing my garden since I started planting it and I've been doing it about once a week. And it's usually on, on today is the day I usually miracle grow. Um, I usually do it in my evening watering. Um, but seeing as how it's gonna rain today, I think I'm going to miracle grow and water everything today. Um, that way it's already there. And then, uh, yeah, let the rain come and hopefully I won't really have to water the garden this weekend. That would be a really nice birthday present from Mother Nature. So there are a lot of exciting things happening in the garden since I actually finished planting about a week ago. Um, the first thing I planted right before uh, the last frost came was uh, my carrots and my onions. Um, they are all growing. Um, I do see carrot sprouts sticking out of the ground. Every day I come over here, it's just getting bigger and bigger and more of them. Um, I do have quite a bit of weeds and stuff in here that I need to pick out, but I was kind of waiting for everything to kind of grow a little bit more so I can identify uh, what's a carrot, what's an onion versus a weed. I'd sure hate to pull what I think is a weed and it's actually a carrot out of there, that would not be good, but uh, just a little bit longer until I can actually kind of clean up that garden bed. Uh, this garden bed right here, next to it, I planted uh, cucumbers in here and I actually have some sprouts in here. I got some sprouts here, uh, there's a couple more over there, and actually the ones on the other side of the fence there, they've all pretty much popped up out of the ground. There's like one or something over there that hasn't popped out yet, and I still have quite a few on this side that haven't popped out, but I'm sure guys, here in the next couple days, I'll be seeing some more sprouts. And then the one next to my cucumbers here is my beans. <laughs> and. I was very excited when I came out here and seen this the other day, but I do have sprouts in here. They haven't all sprouted. I have, I think, four sprouts right now. One of them doesn't look like it's too and too good, but I mean, it's hard to tell. Sometimes they, they kind of wilt up like that and then they'll take off again, but they are growing. Still have more sprouts to pop up, but just like the cucumbers, I'm sure here in the next few days, there will be more sprouts in here. I got one there. Here's another little sprout. That one back there, that's the one I'm saying. It's not doing the best, but I'm sure with some rain and some nice sun, it'll probably come back. And then I actually have one that happened to pop up out of the, <laughs> the weeds right there, but it's growing. And then I got the other one back there. That one's that was the first one that popped up back there. So I'm very excited to have some bush beans growing here really, really, really soon. Uh, this garden bed here, I planted, uh, it's bell peppers. I got red, green, and I actually planted some white habaneros on that end. And I don't see any sprouts in here yet. Um, I've been looking, obviously, every single day, sometimes two or three times a day, and no sprouts. This garden bed right here, this is my uh, zucchini summer yellow squash garden bed. And actually, I do have some sprouts in here as well. They have popped off. Um, I actually planted these. It's been about a week, so these ones are actually growing very fast. And I know cucumbers, or sorry, zucchinis, <laughs> they do very well out here. So I, uh, I'm not really worried about these not doing so well. I've had like the most success with my cucumbers and my zucchinis. Those are the two uh, things I've grown in my garden that I've found that are always growing. They always, they just, they do so well out here. <laughs> well, I was just looking and here's a little zucchini sprout right there. I'm not sure if that's a yellow squash one or just a normal zucchini, but that wasn't there yesterday. So that's exciting. 
I only had two little sprouts. I had this one, and then I have another one like in that corner over there that's sprouting, so yay. More sprouts coming soon, guys. My tomatoes have also sprouted. Um, they're very, very, very small, um, but they are growing. They're getting bigger every day. Um, to me, it looks like pretty much all of the tomato seeds that I have planted in here have sprouted. So now it's just a matter of monitoring them and watching them grow. Uh, here's a little bit of sprouts. They're not very big. They just, these ones must have just popped out since yesterday. I don't remember seeing those yesterday. So I'm very excited to have some Roma tomatoes and some cherry tomatoes this year, guys. I saved the best update for last, guys. And that's gonna be these garden beds right here where I planted all of those flower seeds. Well, there is so many sprouts going on in there. Um, I don't know which flowers are what because I planted all kinds of flowers. There's snapdragons, zanias, baby's breath. I mean, there's all kinds of different flowers in, this, in these garden beds, but they're sprouting and they look so pretty. And I'm, so, I just, I cannot wait for everything to be in like full force and growing out here. I just, I stand at the window by the front door and look out here all the time and just imagine what it's going to look like when everything is growing. And I just, <laughs> I can't make time go by faster, but I wish I could so I could see it all. <laughs> so I placed a couple of hummingbird feeders out on the front of my garden here. I got one down here on this corner and I have one down on that corner down there. And I think these are the two fav uh, favorite hummingbird feeders around because I actually have some more in the backyard, but they seem to really like these ones the best. Like these ones are the less you know full ones and I'm always seeing them out here they fight over them I just I just love seeing the hummingbirds so I'm glad I have them out in the front by the garden so when I'm out there I can sit and stare at them I have mentioned that this year I am all about just adding a bunch of color around here other than green <laughs> but I have actually planted more flowers around here besides just by my garden I actually planted a uh, some flowers in this garden bed right here. Um, I've been doing that every year for the last couple years, planting just a bunch of like wildflower seeds and stuff in here. And uh, last year they grew, but I didn't have as many, as much flowers as I did that very, very first year. And part of the problem is, is the cats. They just love to hang out in this little area here. So I've been kind of working with the cats to try to keep them out of here as much as I can. It's kind of hard, but I'm, I'm hoping once the flowers really start blooming and there's really not a lot of room in here. They won't come in here and mess with it, but they are sprouting. There's lots and lots of little sprouts in here. Uh, just like the front, I planted, you know, zanias, um, no miracle, not miracle grows, <laughs> no snapdragons or anything. I did put some like, um, they're like two to three feet tall sunflowers. I put some of those in there. Um, I don't know, just all kinds of different random little flowers in here so I'm excited to watch this grow hopefully um, it'll do better than any of the other years before but only time will tell on that and I figured I'd show you guys my uh, out here in front of Thunderdome as you guys know I did plant some uh, uh, gladiolas here a few years ago um, they all started to sprout out these are the gladiolas in the back and actually some of them have multiple Sp uh, sprouts on them like more so than the last year like this one's got this big fat one and there's a little tiny one behind it that's growing uh, this one unfortunately because it is on the corner it always gets messed with between the dogs the cats um, us you know coming off of the deck and going this way to get up Thunderdome so sometimes it gets smashed and broke it was covered in rocks I had to uncover it so hopefully this one will sprout some flowers that's what I'm hoping for but this year not only are there going to be gladiolas I actually have some irises that came from Jeff bobbleheads uh, he brought those over I think right before winter kicked in last year um, so I planted those those are growing uh, no flowers on them yet but I'm sure they will come soon um, so there's a couple of irises in here. I think there's three irises. Another thing that I have planted in here, other than irises and gladiolas, is these things. Um, I think they're cannons. 
is what I want to say these are. I got these from Grandma Carol, or uh, Mama Carol. Uh, Tim, Ridge Life's mom, sent these over to me. I got some here. I planted some right there. And I planted some more on this side. I got those ones there. And then these ones, I get planted some down here on the corner. I thought maybe this was going to be a good spot, but I mean, they're doing okay. They're getting new little leaves, sprouts, and stuff on them. But they look pretty with this nice little arrangement of flowers I got growing now in the front of Thunderdome. I'm so excited to see all the color that's about to come soon. I'm sure you guys have heard me talking, but I do have an egg problem. And it's a good problem to have. I'm trying my best to make sure I stay on top of the eggs so they don't get out of control. And I'm not kidding guys, look how many eggs are in this basket. It is so full and this is eggs over, I'd say a two day period. Um, I did not get the eggs yesterday um, and they've been out there laying this morning so I'm sure there is maybe half another basket of this size in here. So in order for me to get those ones that are in the coop right now, I need to do something with these and I actually have some plans for these eggs and I'm going to show you guys what I've been doing with my eggs recently. Okay, I got some of them washed and cleaned and I actually did the float test to make sure they are all still good eggs and they are all good eggs. <laughs> They're all good eggs. <laughs> but aren't these eggs beautiful? I just, the different colors and shapes and sizes, I know a lot of these are the true and white and true blue eggs, but there are some of these like pretty olive eggers in there. Um, I didn't wash all of them, I couldn't fit them all in the bowl, but uh, there is some nice uh, brown eggs. and I just love the wide variety of colors uh, all of our chickens lay. Um, it just, it's so visually appealing, especially when they're all washed and clean and in a bowl like this. I just, oh, they're gorgeous. So I've been doing a lot of research and looking on the internet to find out what's a good use of preserving your eggs. Um, I have been water glassing some of my eggs. I actually have like four half gallon sized jars on the top shelf up here um, that are just waiting to be used for probably winter time, but for right now I'm prepared. Um, one method that I found is very, uh, it's very easy to get rid of a huge amount of eggs if you need to. Um, you can store them for longer periods of time. And also there, it's very convenient for like, if you're gonna make breakfast and just a really quick, easy way to get some eggs. I found actually scrambling them up and vacuum sealing them and freezing them is the, the fastest, easiest way to get rid of like a massive amount of eggs. scrambled eggs. Another reason why I love having farm fresh eggs, because not only are they farm fresh, but I know exactly where my eggs are coming from, and they are proudly laid here in America. It took a little while to get them all vacuum sealed and washed and ready to go, but I have successfully completed all of it. And there was 57 eggs inside that basket. <laughs> Way more than I thought was in there. But I do have a nice little collection of scrambled eggs. Um, I did go through and made like three, like this has got three eggs in it. I got a couple twos in here. Um, I made one a dozen scrambled eggs. Um, there's one with six in here, but nine seems to be my going num my go-to number for vacuum sealing. Um, I figured that's about three eggs for me, three eggs for Wyatt, three eggs for Anthony. If we needed some scrambled eggs for the morning, 
um, nine eggs is good. Plus, um, farm fresh eggs are usually different shapes and sizes, so sometimes you'll get really small eggs. It doesn't quite count as like a large egg, so um, nine eggs is a pretty good number for us as far as scrambling them up and eating them. Um, I do like having these eggs uh, vacuum sealed and frozen because it is almost summertime and we do have plans to like go camping this summer. So I was thinking going camping instead of bringing a whole carton of eggs and having them in the ice chests and either stand a chance of them getting all wet and soggy the carton or possibly breaking inside the ice chest with all the other stuff. I figured this way would one be easier to uh, you know carry around while you're camping Plus it's gonna be nice because they're already gonna be frozen when we first put them in the ice chest. So hopefully by the time we use them, they'll be defrosted. So it should help the, I guess, the refrigerator life of them a little bit longer while we're out camping. So these are definitely a, a good way to use up some of those eggs I got. So I did save all of the eggshells. Um, I do have plans for these eggshells. I'm going to bake them in the oven at a slow, um, slow warm heat um, to kind of cook these a little bit and um, I do put them in the food processor and I'll like grind them up so they kind of look like this. <laughs> um, I use this for like calcium powder for like my tomato plants and stuff. I've been using this in the dirt before I planted the tomatoes. Um, I've gone out there one time I think and put some more on top of after I planted but I want to have a good stock of this um, calcium powder that way I can kind of get ahead of the curve a little bit that way it doesn't get so bad with the calcium on my tomatoes like last year um, I kind of waited till they got a little bit shriveled and were lacking some calcium before I finally did something so I'm trying to stay ahead of the curve so I figured these will be perfect for that Plus, I gotta finish filling up this jar because I've been using it. So, I'm not gonna waste nothing today, guys. If you guys are curious as to kind of what they look like once they're frozen, it's kind of like this. Um, this one's a, a, like a breakfast scrambled. I actually put some like smoked sausage in here and some shredded cheese. That way when they defrost, you just dump it on the pan and you got breakfast in a bag. So, um, I have tested them out. Um, I pulled some scrambled eggs, just plain ones, um, not too long ago, defrosted them just to see what they were like when they got recooked, and they tasted fresh, like I just cracked the egg, so um, like I mentioned before, I think this is a good, quick and easy way to store and just kind of get rid of your eggs so you don't get so overwhelmed so quickly. All right, now for the last thing I'm going to do to hopefully get rid of all of the eggs for the day. <laughs> so many eggs, but I'm going to actually make some homemade pudding. It smells like butterscotch. It looks like butterscotch. It tastes like butterscotch. So I think I successfully made some butter, uh, butterscotch pudding. And it is very delicious, I'll say that. And also, it was actually not that hard to make. It took a total maybe 20, 25 minutes to make it. Um, very simple, only a few ingredients, and it was a very good use of my eggs today. Um, now we have dessert for tonight. I'm sure Wyatt's gonna be very excited when he sees this, and I think before we eat it, I will whip up some homemade whipped cream to put on top, 
and I think all in all this is a really good dessert. I really really wish I didn't have to put it inside this bowl but I don't have little like pudding cups or little tiny bowls. I have nothing like that that I could use so I figured this is better than nothing. We can just kind of scoop it out and eat it as we as we need to or however much we want. So yes, I would say all in all today guys was a very successful day. I used up pretty much all of the eggs I had, um, got plenty of them stored away for a future day to use them. So none went to waste. Um, I got plenty of eggs, shells to add to my calcium powder collection. I made some delicious homemade dessert. So now all I gotta do is wait for dinner. <laughs>